Hi guys, welcome back to Mystery's channel. Thanks for clicking on my video, I really do appreciate it. Today we're gonna go over some stories or tales that I found that talk about strangeness in the sky. Do these strange events that were cataloged in ancient tales around the world that are slightly different, but mostly similar to one another, tell of something that the ancient ancestors of ours, hundreds of generations, thousands of generations ago, decided to catalog in an oral tradition to repeat over and over and over again for generation upon generation to remind us of a history that occurred, teach us a lesson, and warn us of something that may occur again in the future. I really can't tell you if these are actually geomagnetic stories, but I think it's very interesting that around the world, different places, different times, different people separated from one another tell stories that are pretty darn similar. So we're gonna go over a few of those stories. I'm not gonna go crazy into the depths of the myths on it. I'll try to link different things in the description box that will give you more information about these. But if there's not a link that is talking about the myth that I'm going over, just know that I likely found information about it on Wikipedia. So there is that. First set of strangeness in the sky I'm gonna go over will be out of the Asian continent. We'll go over the Chinese myth first that at one point in time there were 10 suns in the sky. These 10 suns, they were brothers and they were young brothers and they were supposed to emerge one at a time as commanded by the Jade Emperor. They were young, they loved to fool around. You could even say that they were mischievous. Once they decided to go up in the sky all at once. Now this, it made the earth too hot. Everything began to die. The earth needed a hero and that hero's name is Hu Yi. To this very day, he is honored over there. For he went out and he shot down nine of those brothers, leaving one son and saving the earth. Now I'm going to bring up in the Korean creation stories, it does talk about a time when there were once two suns, two moons. Now this made the earth very hot in the day and very cold at night until a deity came and destroyed one of each, leaving one sun and one moon. All right, we're going to go now over to some Shinto mythology. This would be out of the Japanese tradition. In the Japanese tradition, there was once a brother and sister son. The sister was named Ama no Uzume. She was the sun goddess and she had a brother who she fought with and it was pretty treacherous. The brother, he was brutal. He vandalized her rice fields. He flayed a horse and he threw it at her loom, breaking it. He brutally killed one of her maidens. Now due to this horrific quarrel between the brother and sister, she decided to retreat and to hide in the heavenly rock cave, leaving him to brighten the sky throughout the day. Now this one is not a mythology at all. This is a rock drawing, but look at this sucker. This comes out of an area called Kashmir, and in that land, there is this rock. Now this rock is super interesting to me. This was carved and it's dated to around 4300 BCE because near it is a village that was known to be inhabited back to about 4300 BCE. This rock could be older than that village, we just don't know. But it does depict a hunting motif. And in this hunting motif, there are two men that look to be hunting an elk, or I don't know what they have over there. I imagine it's some kind of deer or elk or caribou or something like that. And there are two suns in the sky. And one of those suns is being chased by what appears to be a wolf. You know why I think that's interesting? Norse mythology, anyone? What else is interesting about this is that some people took some interest of it, mainly some astrophysicists. Somehow they came across this article and a group of astrophysicists from Germany and India decided they were gonna look into it. Thought, you know what? There's but one sun in the sky. Why are there two on this damn rock carving? We're gonna figure this out. They figured out that this village that's nearby is dated to about 4300 BCE. And they thought, you know what? Let's go and see if we can search the ancient annals of astrologic history and find maybe something that may have happened around there. And guess what they found? At 4600 BCE, a supernova occurred. The supernova is called Supernova HB9. Now, what I find interesting about this is that if this is ancient man depicting something that they witnessed like a supernova, and they depicted it as a sun. Well, that means that they understood that the stars and the sun were the same thing. 6,000 years ago, hunter gatherers that were barely making it out there somehow knew something that we didn't understand barely at all 500 years ago. Pretty amazing when you think about it, right? Now we're gonna move on over to the Australian continent. Please forgive me for this because I'm gonna massacre a bunch of names. I. My mouth doesn't make words like that. I just can't seem to do it. The first legend I'm going to tell you comes from the Tiwi Island tradition. 
In this tale, there are two sister sons. One is named Wariu Pranala and the other is named Muru Piankala. They are the daughters of the creation ancestor named Madunkala. Madunkala is described as an old blind woman who emerged from the underworld to care for her children, creating the land in the process. Her children comprised of the two sisters and a son named Perukupali. There was no light and no heat at that time, and two ancestor men who were represented by a wedge-tailed eagle and a fork-tailed kite rubbed two sticks together and accidentally created fire. Perukupali realized immediately that light and heat were beneficial and lit a bark torch, which he gave to his sister, Wuryu Pranala. It was her responsibility to keep it lit. Moon Man, Tiapara, whose face was scarred from a fight, was given a smaller torch. At the start of every day, the sun woman covers herself in red ochre and lights the bark torch of the sun. Some of the ochre falls off of her and creates the red glow of the morning sky. Very interesting. Ochre is brought up. And we all know that red ochre is most definitely important stuff traditionally wherever you live. Now this next tradition comes from the Yurkala community in northeastern Arnhem land. <laughs> And this tradition also speaks of two sons in the sky, a mother and a daughter. Sun woman, Walu, and her daughter, Bara, rise together in the eastern horizon and begin their journey across the sky. But Walu feared that the combined heat of both her and her daughter would burn the people and set the land afire, so she sent the daughter away below the horizon. Some other traditions in this area also have two sons, but instead of mother and daughter, they are husband and wife sons, where one gets banished to save humanity. Okay, now this is a tradition that is recorded, I believe, in the Kimberley area. Again, it's a mother and daughter son. In this tradition, the mother's son caused a great drought that dried up all the creeks and rivers, burnt the grass, and killed the animals. The sons thought about how they could prevent this from happening. The two sun women lived in a world to the east beyond the land of the sea. They lived in three logs, which were smooth and slippery. These logs were gateways to our world, and the mother's son grew too big and became stuck. Her daughter could easily move in and out of the log, and because of that, she shone. And because she shone, decided to go across the sky in her mother's place. As she journeyed across the sky, she trod on a snake, which bit her thigh. This made her very ill, and she died at dusk. Her mother nursed her back to life and explained to her daughter that she must do this every day because together their combined heat would burn the land and cause another drought. In this Australian tradition, there is a point in time where both suns were in the sky at once. Now we move on to Europe. In Norse mythology, the original sun was Sol and the original moon was Mani. Now Sol and Mani, they were followed by wolves and eventually they were caught and devoured by those wolves. Now this is said to happen in a time when the gods walked the earth with us people. The wolves caught Sol and Mani during a time called Ragnarok, the twilight of the gods. After the twilight of the gods, when all was lost and destroyed, a new sun and a new moon traveled through space to earth even better than the ones before. Now we're going to move a little bit further back in time. This is an even older Germanic depiction. And in this version, the sun's name is Suna, and she has a sister named Synthgunt. Some historians believe that Synthgunt is actually a Valkyrie, and others believe that she is a heavenly body to suns sister's sons. Now, interestingly enough, there is another Germanic tradition that speaks of the tale that the son had two daughters that once accompanied her across the sky. Because all three of them were too hot for earth and were burning everything, the mother sent her daughters away to save the inhabitants of earth. Now, on to Greek mythology. Now, here's another one that I did a video on. Uh, Plato's Timaeus Critias tells the story of how Atlantis was told to Salon by the Egyptian priests, who prefaced the story by saying that there have been and there will be again many destructions of mankind arising out of many causes. The greatest have been brought down by the agencies of fire, water, and other lesser ones by innumerable other causes. There's a story even you, the Greeks, have preserved that once upon a time, Phaethon, the son of Helios, yoked the steeds of his father's chariot because he was not able to drive them in the path of his father, burnt up all that was upon earth, and was he himself destroyed by a thunderbolt. Now, this has the form of a myth, but really signifies declination of the bodies moving in the heavens around the earth and of great conflagrations of things upon the earth, which recur after long intervals. All right, now on to South America. After people were created, the gods decided to give them two lights in the sky, the sun during the day and the moon during the night. The god of rain, Mensabak, did not ask anything and decided to create the sun and the moon on his own. And thus, Mensabak made two celestial bodies of his own, both of them being his work. 
However, the sun and the moon had already been created by the supreme god Hachakyom, about which Mensabuk had no knowledge. When Mensabuk threw his sun and moon onto the sky, there were suddenly four celestial bodies, two suns and two moons. Hachakyom, however, did not like it, as people could not sleep. After the sun rose, the day began. Then, the sun, losing its strength in the afternoon, would be coming to an end of its path in the evening. However, as this is occurring, another sun, a second sun, rose around 6 o'clock in the evening, preventing day from ever being over. This is the reason why people could not sleep. And Hacha Kyum said, We cannot leave it as it is. The people we created need to rest at night. They are made of clay, and they need to sleep. And as the histories tell, we, the people, claim the same. We said, We're just clay. We're from the earth. This this is why people need to sleep. Hachikyom decided to bring the second sun down from the sky, and he also decided to eliminate the moon from the sky. If he did not do it, there would still be two suns and two moons which would collide at any time. He left them at the place called Tonina, where the god Mensabuk lived. They looked like two little rounded rocks, reminding of the work left by Mensabuk. Hachikyom also removed that sun and that moon made by Mensabuk because he was a lower god who is trying to strive to have the same power that he had. Okay, so the next one I'm going to tell you is going to be a North American legend. This is a Cherokee legend, and in this one, the sun is a female. This is titled, The Daughter of the Sun. The sun lived on the other side of the sky vault, but her daughter lived in the middle of the sky, directly above Earth. Every day, as the sun was climbing along in the sky arc to the west, she used to stop at her daughter's house for dinner. Now, the sun hated the people of Earth because they never looked straight at her without squinting. She said to her brother, the moon, My grandchildren are ugly. They screw up their faces whenever they see me. But the moon said, I like my younger brothers. I think they're handsome. And it was because... They always smiled pleasantly at his mild glow in the night sky. The sun was jealous of the moon's popularity and decided to kill the people. Every day she got near the house of her daughter, she sent down such sultry heat that fever broke out and people died by the hundreds. When everyone had lost some friend and it seemed that no one would be spared, the humans went for help to little men. These men who were friendly spirits said that the only way that people could survive was to kill the sun. Little men made medicine to go change two humans into snakes, the spreading adder and the copperhead, who would hide near the daughter's door and bite the sun. The snakes went up to the sky and they lay in wait until the sun arrived for dinner. But when the spreading adder was about to spring, her bright light blinded him and he could only spit out yellow slime, as he does to this very day when he tries to bite. The sun called him a nasty thing and went into the house. And the copperhead was so discouraged that he crawled off without trying to do anything. The people, still dying from the terrible heat, went a second time to the little men for help. Again, the little men made medicine and changed one man into the great Octena, the water monster, and another into a rattlesnake. As before, the serpents had instructions to kill the old son when she stepped out of her daughter's house. Octena was large and fierce, with horns on his head, and everyone thought he was sure to succeed. But the rattlesnake was so eager that he raced ahead and coiled up just outside the house. When the son's daughter opened the door to look for her mother, he struck, and she fell dead in the doorway. Forgetting to wait for the old son, he went back to the people, and Octena was so angry at the snake's stupidity that he went back too. Since then, we pray to the rattlesnake and we don't kill him because he wishes people well and he never tries to bite if, if we don't disturb him. But Octena grew angrier and more dangerous all the time. He became so venomous that if you even looked at a man, that man's whole family would die. Eventually, the people held counsel and decided that he was just too dangerous and they sent him to Gulun Lati, the end of the world where he still is. When the son found her daughter dead, she shut herself up in the house and grieved. Now the people were no longer dying from the heat, but they lived in darkness. Once more, they sought help from the little men who said that in order to coax the sun out, they must bring her daughter back from the ghost country, the ghost country, which lies in the darkening land in the west. The people chose seven men to make the journey. The little men told the seven men to take a box and told each man to carry a sourwood rod that was a hand breadth long. When they tried to go to the ghost country, the little men explained that they would find all the ghosts at a dance. They would stand outside the circle, and when the sun daughter danced past them. They must strike her with the rods and she would fall to the ground. Then they could put her in the box and bring her back to her mother. But they must not open the box even a crack 
until they arrived home. The seven men took the rods and the box and traveled west for the seven days until they came to the darkening land. There, they found a great crowd of ghosts having a dance as if they were alive. The son's daughter was outside the circle, and as she danced past them, one of the seven men struck her with his rod. As she swung around a second time, another touched her with his rod, and then another and another, until the seventh round, where she fell out of the ring. The men put her into the box, and they closed the lid, and the other ghosts never seemed to notice what had happened. The seven took up the box and started toward the east. In a while, the girl came to life and begged to be let out, but the party went on without answering. Soon again, she called and said she was hungry, but they did not reply. At last, when the group was very near home, the daughter of the son cried that she was being smothered and begged them to raise the lid just a little. Now, they were afraid that she was really dying, so they barely cracked the lid just to give her air. There was a fluttering sound, and something flew past them. Then, they heard the red bird cry. Quish, quish, quish. Shutting the lid, they went on again. When they arrived at the settlements and opened the box, it was empty. So we now know that the red bird is the daughter of the sun. And if the party had kept this box closed, as the little men told them to, they could have brought her home safely. As today, we would be able to recover our friends from the great ghost country. But because the seven opened the box, we can never bring back the people who die. The son had been hopeful when the party had started off for the darkening land, but when they came back without her daughter, she wept tears, which caused a great flood. Fearing that the world would be drowned, the people held another council and decided to send their handsomest young men and women to amuse the son and stop her crying. This group danced before her and sang their best songs, but for a long time, she kept her face bowed and paid no attention. At last, when the drummer suddenly changed the song, she looked up and she was so pleased at the sight of the beautiful young people that she forgot her grief and she smiled upon us again. Now you guys, I know there's so many other tales out there that talk about strangeness in the sky, about two suns or suns that go away. I might do another video because I found some very interesting thing about times when the sun disappeared for three years. Perhaps these are witness accounts. That's what I got for today. I hope you guys have yourselves a very great day.